Welcome to the Fantasy NASCAR Podcast brought to you by RaceForThePrize.com, North Wilkesboro Truck Series. We've got pricing, one of my favorite podcasts of the week. We'll try to find some value picks and then also look at the top tier expensive drivers and try to predict who's going to lead laps and be the best point for dollar play. We always start at the bottom with the lemons class, the C class, and we find our value here. And the rule is who is going to maximize finishing position, who can win the class. So they score the most finishing position points, but that's not the end of the conversation. What we also then have to ask is among that class, even if you do win, if you start too close to the front, then you miss out on point or points via place differential. So part one, who can win this class? Part two, maybe they can't win the class, but they can finish towards the top of this pack and pack in some place differential as well so that they're a better value play. Trey Hutchins, if you follow the link, if you've got access to the Fantasy NASCAR spreadsheet, which you can get by Venmoing, PayPal, or Cash App, it's a small mom and pop operation. No subscriptions that you got to sign up. No automatic billing. You forget three months down the road that I'm still getting billed for that thing. No, just send me some Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. It's in the description below. Send you the sheets. You throw a couple bucks my way, $15 for North Wilkesboro, and then the Memorial Day Charlotte race is 15 bucks, price of a pizza. And that's basically what you're buying, buying a pizza for my family. And I appreciate it. Really, we'll probably get chicken nuggets. Or maybe we'll get pizza. I love pizza. It's good. So, Trey Hutchins, if you look, occasionally he and his dad bring in a truck, and then that truck dies. You can follow the link, and you'll see that mechanical failures typically plague this random truck that randomly appears i am not interested in that we know the spencer boy thad moffett story both teams are trying to slowly build a solid operation they are methodical they run in the back and they are finishing races they don't put themselves in terrible situations which we like and they are viable at times boyd a little bit more cautious and slower Thad Moffat a little bit more, and we can look really at the data recently, and it's not bad what they're doing. Look, driver rating-wise, they're running at the back the entire time, but they run to the end of the race, and they'll be two, three laps down, but they finish the race, whereas we're going to have some top-tier drivers that don't finish races, mid-pack drivers who don't finish races, and through attrition, Moffat and Boyd gain a couple spots. And we had alluded to this in the past, how these guys are finishing a little bit better than where they're running because just attrition. And I talked about this in that podcast last week. And here it was, Thad Moff had a big day at Darlington, just simply running at the end and surviving. Spencer Boyd running at the end and surviving. It's not always going to be this good. You're more than likely going to see results right here, like where he runs 29th at Kansas, finishes 24th. It's a very good day for that faction team. Doesn't really work out for Boyd, but that's what they're doing if they are starting dead last. Unfortunately, because of issues in qualifying, we don't often see these guys starting dead last, but we could see that happening if qualifying gets rained out. So we'll see. Justin S. Carroll, I talked about that in the previous podcast. I don't really need to go as deep. Late model experience will show up at the local tracks in North Carolina, Martinsville, in his region. Look, he's not the greatest driver. The truck's not going to be the best, but it is going to be slightly competitive. He has a decent idea what he's doing. I know the 32nd place finish at Martinsville doesn't look good, but he was battling around 20th late in that race before getting wrecked with Brett Holmes. It didn't work out. He's not on the top of my board. I think I would rather go with a Thad Moffitt. Now, ultimately, I don't see any of these guys winning this class. But if they're starting in the back, could they finish in the middle of this class? Yes, they can and could be decent point per dollar plays if they are starting in the back. All things being equal, if Carroll and Moffitt are both in the back, I think I will take Moffitt, who is going to be more conservative, whereas Carroll is going to push it a lot more because he only gets these races every once in a while. And unfortunately, when he pushed it a little bit more, like he did at Martinsville, he wrecked out. It's not a very safe play, and it's ultimately more of a too cute play. Mason Massey, again, 
the young team, his first year with them, the young trucks been around for years, halfway decent. Seems like they're running a little bit better this year than last year. Not as good as they were about two or three years ago, but in Massey's first year with them, they are slowly getting better. His average running position is right there in the middle of that lemons class. And then he benefits from the end, from the attrition and moving forward. Big gains. And you look at Martinsville, probably our closest in comparison to short flat track in North Wilkesboro. He ran right there in the middle to the top of the lemons class, hung onto the lead lap, dealt with all the cautions, survived all the chaos, comes away with an 11th place finish. Last week, same situation. Look, he's not good, but he doesn't have to be good. You just got to survive the truck race, get a good restart at the end. I talked about this in the previous podcast where there were some big gains. Chris Hacker last year hacks the system at North Wilkesboro, getting eight spots on the last overtime restart. Massey can be in that position to get those big gains at the end. The truck is fast enough to hang with the top of the lemons. You get him at 5,400. But remember our flow chart. Yes, he can win the lemons class or finish towards the top, but we also need to have place differential in mind when making these picks. For Rayum, if he is the guy that ultimately is in this AM22 truck, which is a Rayum truck now, you can follow the link and see what the 22, 22 has done. Really not much. It's about similar to Moffat and Boyd. And the more of the issue with this truck is that you get random drivers in it, so you don't always get consistent results. Keith McGee's, Mason Maggio's. Ultimately, the truck hasn't been bad. You can finish around 28th. Fits the same profile as Moffat and Boyd. If anyone's going to be a little bit more conservative and safe with the truck and race like Moffat and Boyd, it would be the team owner in Josh Rayum. So he's not completely off the board. Uh, the only time the truck really had a bad day is ultimately, and it's not finishing on the lead laps ever, was well, actually in the last race at Darlington where the brakes failed. And again, you're not really surprised to see an inexperienced driver like Mason Maggio at Darlington probably working the car too or the truck too hard and having that situation. Hopefully, I mean, you can fix the brakes. It's going to be fine and good to go. So again, Ram's not terrible either. But do I see him battling to win this class? Probably not. Same play as Moffat and Boyd. But I would put him ahead of Carroll simply because he's not going to be too aggressive. And I know you want to chase aggressive drivers for the upside, but I don't think that's necessarily there's much to be gained by Carroll being really aggressive. You can be moderately aggressive at the end and still be a decent play. Then we get up to more of the top tier of the lemons class. Wallace Allen, who is often too aggressive, but has plenty of upside, can get a solid finish, but can also wreck and have his issues as well. I've been burned by Wallace Allen plenty of times. We know, I think I probably would rather go with the more conservative radium truck that may not be as fast than taking Lawless Allen. But if Lawless Allen is starting shotgun in the field, our second step in the flow chart, then yeah, you complain because A, he can win the class or finish at the top of it. And if he can maximize place differential, we like it. Brett Holmes has been very solid, very strong. Running a little bit better than the guys below him in the class and then finishing these races really well. First year with the Spire Technical Alliance. Don't know how strong that is. First year with Mike Shiplett. Seems like they're starting to kind of make some gains. And obviously, 14th, Kansas, all by 17th at Darlington, 15th last year at North Wilkesboro. They're moving up. They're not moving out of the class. They can win the class and they can actually dab into or dabble with a top 20. Clayton Green, I have no idea why he is $5,800. It's a Roper truck, which we don't really love. Doesn't run every week. Clayton Green is well, old and crusty. Old late model experience. Hasn't been in a truck in a while. He was going to run in the Cars Tour. All of that got rained out. Maybe you could have bumped Clayton Green up a little bit if he got those extra laps in the Cars Tour, but those races didn't happen, so that's out the window. Timmy Hill in our Lemons class, 
slightly more expensive, but you're paying for the experience. You're paying for the conservative approach. Yeah, you wrecked out early at North Wilkesboro last year. It happens, but those are usually few and far between. He typically is just out there running in the middle of that pack, protecting his equipment, and waiting to get the boost at the end. You look at his last five races, 17, 20, 21, 22, he gets that Darlington boost like everybody else, following the same recipe for success of just hanging in there, surviving the race, protecting your equipment. We've seen him do it in plenty of Martinsville races before, and I expect him to try to do the same thing at North Wilkesboro. I like to play. Uh, 5,900 is not too high. Too high. I, um, you know, if you're deciding between Hill and Holmes, because they are going to be kind of towards the top of that class, Holmes probably a little bit more aggressive. Hill probably a little more conservative. And again, we're talking about one or two spots. Not much of a difference there. All they got to do is finish at the top of the class. I like Hill's experience more. Wallace Allen scares me. Massey's probably a place that I could go because it's a little bit cheaper in the way that he has been trending. All right, so then we take a step up to these drivers who, you know, Jack Wood, you can follow the link, not the greatest driver, plenty of opportunities at GMS and other good equipment, really has never delivered. They'll jump in in a part-time ride at Bill McAnally. It's a fast truck. For six thousand dollars maybe you get some practice laps in but it's hard to get behind now let's just go ahead and pull up the jack wood stats and to look overall at his career to give you an idea of what this guy has done and how he has disappointed so he has raced in solid equipment every season every season i'll go ahead and pull that up as well this is not like the guy's never been given an opportunity. GMS, when they were halfway decent, not at their greatest. Then he's running for Kyle Busch in 2023. Now he's getting opportunities to build McAnally. Can't really ask for much more than that, can you? Pretty solid. Well, his average finish is 24th. That is unacceptable in 53 races. He only has three top 10s. That's just ugly. So. Yeah, it's probably the reason why $6,000. 6100 for the Charlie Henderson truck and Stephen Parsons. That's fine. We're going to need a top 15. Maybe not even that much at 6100 if we can get some place differential. I would argue that's a pretty cheap price for this truck and an experienced driver. The only problem is the drivers that are ahead of him should all likely finish ahead of him. He can finish basically above i mean he's priced pretty much right in terms of where you would see him finishing or at least running he's going to run ahead of these drivers can he move forward right he's the 27th driver on the board right here he could run 2025 if he survives some attrition he can move forward i would much rather go to daniel die who continues to be underpriced he is, when we look at driver rating this year, a top 15 driver. Priced as the 26th driver in a Bill McAnally truck. Finished in top 15 in North Wilkesboro last year. Top 10s, top 15s all over the place. He's had some issues here and there, but who hasn't? It's in the truck series. Mechanical problems happen. $6,200. This is a steal. The only concern is he's probably going to start much closer to the front. So you'll have to do the calculations on, is he going to be a good point per dollar play? Is there a little bit too much risk there? And are there other better values on the board? Dawson Sutton, son of the co-owner of Rackley WAR, started racing a couple years ago. You can follow the link and see what he has done in late models. A little bit of experience, a little bit of success. I believe he's got a top five at a Nah, he was halfway decent and qualified for the Snowball Derby. But there are concerns. Would have liked to see him get some laps this weekend. If practice is rained out, that's very much a concern. But again, as I mentioned in the previous podcast, 
there's a possibility that uh, Rackley has been working on a super truck for the kid. You know, imagine you're working for Rackley. The last thing you want to do is put together a junk truck for the kid in his first opportunity. So it's very likely that this setup should be pretty finely tuned and ready to rock and roll. Will the kid be ready to rock and roll? We shall see. Um, again, that might be too much narrative for you, but just throwing it out there, something to look at. Connor Jones really hasn't been the greatest for Thor in his part-time opportunities. Does have some late model experience. Would like to have seen him run in the Cars Tour. In this 6400 range, like die the best, it's not even close. The issue you're going to run into, though, is he's going to start much closer to the front. And Jones could be a little bit more reckless and too aggressive. Dawson Sutton's kind of a big unknown. The easiest one to dismiss is Jack Wood. Unless he has some sort of miraculous weekend, Parsons always an option. Mills is also part of that Lemons back class. And as I mentioned in the previous podcast, he can be too aggressive. Whereas I would much rather take the savings with Timmy Hill, who will be conservative, methodical, may not be the best in the class, but will be there at the end more times than Matt Mills. Matt Mills has more speed, but because he has more speed, he's more aggressive. And as the poor finishes pile up, I think, and then he did have a good weekend finally at Darlington. So maybe the positive juju is going his way. After lots of weeks of it not, but lots of weeks of it not is because he's not the greatest race car driver, probably a little too more aggressive than he should be, probably feeling the pressure of, hey, I'm in a niche truck. The other niche trucks are doing really well. I need to set my game up. And all those things adding up, I would just rather go with the safer Timmy Hill play, save the money. I don't think much more can be gained from Matt Mills. Again, it always comes down to, do I need to build the optimal lineup or a winning lineup? And the winning lineup seems to be going the route of the Timmy Hill. Oh, it doesn't have the speed. It's not always about speed. He finished 13th, Mills finished 11th. You run the race a thousand times. Who's more likely going to finish that 13th? It's going to be Timmy Hill. Dean Thompson. We'll put Dean Thompson's chart give you an idea of what this kid's been doing it's really not that bad the story of dean thompson is when he's not wrecking it's pretty good early years with nice 2022 not the greatest truck the numbers don't look very good you can see he's finishing anywhere from 15 to 25. then he steps over last season gets with tricon when he is not crashing and as you can see on the right side of your screen a lot of Dean Thompson crashes, a lot of problems. But when he doesn't have problems, 21st in Martinsville, boy, I would like to see something better. Okay, we're going to see something better. How about ninth at Darlington last year? How about third at Charlotte? It is a David Gillen Tricon truck. When he's not wrecking, eighth at Pocono, 15th at Milwaukee, seventh at Phoenix. When he's not wrecking, he's not a bad little pick. Bailey Curry, he has elevated out of that class. Bailey Curry is a top 15 driver, could flirt with a top 10. We'll see what he's got. Very, I don't know, 6,700, kind of a cheap price for what he has done. You look top 16, although you get Dayton die a little bit cheaper. Bailey Curry's been a more consistent driver. I'd argue the McAnally truck is faster, but again, speed can be overrated in the truck series. Talent, being able to know when to go, when to make moves, which Curry demonstrates more often. Better race craft with Curry, so you're paying a little bit more there. And I would say race craft is a more of a deciding factor than trucks. I mean, we've got Elmore en engines, El and, and they're all pretty much the same. There's not that much of a differentiation. It is a Bill McAnally truck, but this isn't Christian Eckes' truck. I mean, yeah, raw speed guy should have a top 10 truck. But, again, I think racecraft's more important. Jake Garcia hasn't been great this season. 
for Thor and his transition over from Bill McAnally. He's there. I would rather go with Bailey Curry again. I think the racecraft is better there. And I don't know if the Thor truck really is that much better than the Nice truck. The Nice truck's looking really good at the moment. Curry with some very solid results. And then the Phil Gould machine has been lights out. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Ty Dillon mentioned earlier, 7,000 weeks ago, I would have scoffed at making this play. But as I mentioned leading up to the last couple weeks with the kid in Dawson Sutton knocking at the door, trying to make his place, possibly taking over this Rackley truck next season, big race for him. Ty Dillon needs to step his game up. I don't know if I don't know if Dillon wants to run with him next year, but if Dillon has a bad season this year, I think uh, the time is up. I don't know how many more opportunities he's going to get in NASCAR if he can't deliver here. And sure, it took him and Shane Wilson a while, but it looks like yeah, they might be finally simpatico, coming together, figuring things out, putting together some good finishes, some good runs. Look at the driver rating, 16th of Kansas, 12th of Darlington. So that was no real like, oh, well, that was just an attrition game. He had a very good truck at Darlington. Finished, ran well, right direction. Maybe he just needed that pressure to be put on him. And if this team really is circling North Wilkesboro for the Dawson Sutton debut, then it's very likely that the same instrumentation and engineering that goes into making a fast truck for Dawson should go into Ty Dillon. You think he's named after Dawson's Creek? I guarantee it. Anyone born in the late 90s, 2000s, I guarantee their mom was a Dawson's Creek fan. Can't help it. Gotta be. Guarantee. Lock it in. Mom probably loved that show. I hated that show. I watched the show. I was like, if you wanted a girlfriend, you had to kind of know what was going on. Like, oh, I got to sit through this on the WB. Brendan Queen, Butterbean Queen, late model legend at a very young age, superstar, kids doing everything right, getting an opportunity in a truck. And not just a truck, a Tricon truck, which are arguably, and maybe there's not even an argument anymore, the fastest trucks in the series. So you're putting the kid in a super fast truck. I would expect big things from Queen. Hopefully get some practice laps. Unfortunately, all the car stuff got rained out. So that does hurt. But 7,200 for a hot prospect and a really good truck. You can definitely go there. Another hot prospect, maybe not as shiny as once was in a decent truck, slowly coming together. Not necessarily replicating what Zane Smith had done, but again, that's too much to ask at this point. A lot of late model experience, short flat tracks. This could be a track where he could be successful. But again, when you look and size it up, he's got to beat some really good trucks. He's about where he should be, priced at 17th. It's not going to be easy to beat drivers with similar equipment with much more experience much better race craft. He is still a young prospect. Same can be said of Brendan Queen. Just imagine him to roll in and beat some of these guys. But again, there's going to be attrition. Some of these guys are going to wreck out and make mistakes. And I like the Tricon a lot better than the front row at this moment. Chase Purdy, 7,500. I don't know if I really want to spend more for him than Riggs and Queen, but he's not having a bad season. Spire trucks have been very strong. They're going in the right direction, so we'll pull up what Purdy has done recently. Look at his overall stats, get an idea of his career. Starting out with GMS, similar to that Jack Wood situation, not really the greatest. He's had plenty of good opportunities, not really the greatest. Now, again, GMS was kind of phasing out, and this is before their merger. We didn't necessarily know that they were not given a care anymore. He goes over to Hattori, and Hattori is phasing out in 2022, but he's not that bad. He's about a 15th place truck during the season, getting some experience, making some gains. On the paper, it looks like Purdy has been given great opportunities. But as we take a more reflective view of those GMS trucks he had, wasn't that great? They were fading away. Hattori, 
when we, oh, it's a Tory truck. You know, Brett Moffat was a champion, a Tory. They're, they were fading out. They were phasing out. Still putting together decent finishes. And then you look at what he did last year for KBM. Now, again, you're in KBM. We're expecting huge things. They, too, are phasing it. This guy's like the, the – if Purdy's on your team, you better watch out. He's like that Grim Reaper meme. He goes to GMS, they close. He goes to Hattori, they close. He goes to Kyle Busch Motorsports, they close. But you look at his finishes much better as he gets more experience and probably a better truck. Now he's getting an opportunity with Squire. It's not going so well. It hasn't worked out, hasn't been terrible, but we do look at Martinsville, and he finished third. That is our closest comparison. We look at Darlington, and he finished sixth. It's there. The truck is there. Is it the best Spire truck? No, it's not the best, but it's pretty good, and the Spire trucks were very competitive last year at this racetrack. Obviously, the best Spire truck is going to be given to Sammy Smith, that's the hot rod that won this race last year. That's the hot rod that's been very solid all over the place. But if it's been solid all over the place, then the secondary Spire truck is going to be pretty good as well. I mean, you can say it's tertiary in comparison to Rajah Caruth, but it will have speed. And Purdy has run well at the tracks that we want to see. Eighth at North Wilkesboro last year for Kyle Busch. Again, sixth at Darlington, third at Martinsville. There's risk involved. But there's plenty of upside. You know, he is 16th in price on the board. He can get 5th to 10th place. Hard to see me getting Briggs in that position. <clears throat> Hard to see Brendan Queen getting there. He could, but that might be a bit of a pipe dream. Tanner Gray is the same old Tanner Gray. And even that 18th place finish at North Wilkesboro was not a good run for him. Then we look at our senior class. Right, this is almost like the senior tour. Matt Craft and Ankrum in finger freezing, even though Ankrum doesn't belong in a senior tour. He is pretty much right there in terms of results. We'll start with Ankrum at 8,100. Started the season looking great in this McAnally truck. Definitely contender. One of the highest rated drivers. Doing well in points, but he has gone in the wrong direction. Now, it's not completely because his truck stinks. He's gotten into wrecks and he's had pit road situations that have unfolded. He also wrecked at North Wilkesboro last year. And so his hot season has come to a cold, cold, hard stop. And you could easily see some positive regression from Ankrum. But even when he is running, I have not necessarily been impressed by the speed like I was earlier in the season. At an E100, with some place differential, he could get a top 10 and work. But even when he was running well, you didn't consider him to be a lap leader. But at 8100, he doesn't have to be. He's competing with the senior class, senior class, the senior tour. And he can outrun these drivers and be better point per dollar plays if he can avoid wrecks. Again, I would like to have seen a little bit more speed. In finger freezing and crafting, really, there's not much you need to say. Driver rating for crafting of 12th, 13th for Grant Infinger, or well, 8th, 12th, and then freezing, pulling up in the back. All about the same. All can probably get to a top 10, but there is where the door pretty much closes until it doesn't. So if we can consider, you know, the backpack, the lemons, you know, you can run 20th, 22nd, and then you benefit from attrition. Well, these guys can get a similar boost, be a smaller boost from some of the top 10 cars wrecking out. So you can legitimately give any one of these guys a top 10. Then you wreck out a couple decent trucks, and then they're around six or seven. And at their price point, it makes them a viable option. And then really the deciding factor, because speed and racecraft's all about the same, is who can give me a little bit more place differential? Taylor Gray finished 21st last year at North Wilkesboro, should have had top 10. Galaxy Brain pits under the final caution and pretty much just ruins his day by gambling on. Well, I don't even know what they're thinking. Either way, I have a top 10 truck. He's my dark horse candidate. As you can see, he won the championship with a lot of top 10s. At 8,500, I like it. Ben Rhodes moving up in the world. I think he is starting to 
turn into the typical Ben Rhodes that we see where he goes from just being eh to this guy just methodically gets points every single week. He probably belongs with the senior tour, but I'll elevate him a little bit with this group. Taylor Gray, Rajah Cruz, Ben Rhodes. I feel more confident in them running top 10 than I do crafted Ingram in finger freezing. Not a huge difference, but also I don't expect any of these guys to lead laps in most weeks, and especially not this week. Sanchez is somewhere in between. I think at an intermediate track, I definitely would give a boost to Sanchez. At North Wilkesboro, I am not giving him that boost. Now we go to the top. Ty Majeski, late model superstar, checks every box, everything you want to see. He could very much well be a lap leader if he can avoid issues. Finished second at North Wilkesboro last year in a very stacked field. As we would expect from this kid who has late model success, who is good at the short tracks, definitely going to be a contender to lead laps. Sammy Smith, got a lot of links here for Sammy. You should dig into them. I am really impressed by just about everything I read about this kid. The one link that I will pop up is probably the most relevant, and that is what he has done at Martinsville in the Xfinity Series, which is lead laps and finish up front. Second place last year with JGR at Martinsville in the spring race. In the fall race, he comes back, leads 147 laps, finishing third. This is a young kid going to Martinsville. I know it's a JGR car, but that's impressive. This year finishes seventh, 42 laps led, clearly knows how to run short flat tracks. And it's not a surprise if you follow the other link in the notes, which you can get access to at racefortheprize.com. If you purchase the fancy NASCAR spreadsheet, and you can look and see what he has done. Really impressive late model stats. And I know people get tired of me talking about that. But if we're looking at short flat tracks in the truck series or the Xfinity series, and we're talking about top tier late model races, not just some rando race out in the Southwest with dudes with beat up, banged up, spray painted cars. We're talking cars tour, pro series, stock series. We're talking premier asphalt late model races. Sammy Smith has a very strong resume. You should check it out. I was really impressed by his ARCA. Let me see if I can pull the ARCA stuff up. Let's go to the ARCA results. Again, I don't often pull up ARCA stuff because it's ARCA, but when the data is very strong, it's hard to ignore. And so you look, you won at Berlin in 2022. You won at Elko, the three-eighths of a mile short flat track. Led 233 of the 250 laps in that race. He won at Bristol. Closes the season out with three wins. One in Milwaukee. One at Salem. One at the championship race at the short flat track in Toledo. Come on. Again, I don't often pull these up, but man, six wins in a season, 15 top fives and 16 starts. We really, I have slept on Sammy Smith way too long. This kid could be something more than I ever expected. Eric Amarola jumping in with his old crew chief from 2010. I don't know. I think he could hang in this race. I don't think he's leading laps, running fast laps. A Tory Dustin off the truck. Not really excited about that. Now we're at the top. Here's your big three. Eckeson High. Every week, we can see over here, hog points, 61, 17, 59 for Christian Eckes at Martinsville, our closest comparison. Heim's been hot lately. These are two to keep your eye on. We go back to last year at North Wilkesboro. Before Kyle Larson took over, Heim scored 28 hog points. They're going to be there. But so is Ross Chastain. And the Phil Gold Al Nice truck has been hot. Now, Chastain sort of, sort of stole one last week at Darlington, but he was running up front all day, and he gets the win in the end. What do you want me to say? He's aggressive. Now, the problem is if we got Chastain, we need laps led. They didn't really give you laps led last week, but this field is not that stacked. This is not the 2023 Truck Series field. He ran well here last year, just finished ninth. Not a good restart at the end. That cost him some spots, but that was a stacked field. Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, 
Bubba Wallace, all the regular elites, and Chastain had a good race. Should have got a better result. Last week, good race for them. The week before that, Phil Gould, Al Neese, Caden Honeycutt nearly won the Kansas race. The truck looks dynamic. Chastain is aggressive. He could get out there and run away with this thing. He's got plenty of experience now at North Wilkesboro. He is a strong consideration, if not the best play. And then it's Eckes and I. That should do it. Hopefully that gives you an idea of where we're leaning. Those are your hogs to slide in. I broke it all down. Thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, share. Blessed to have you guys around. Love you guys. Triple A, fantastic.